Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair Explore Session. We thank you for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the session. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening um, between today and tomorrow, so please be sure to sign up for more if interested. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash BACS. We have a great variety of schools that will be presenting for you today that vary in size, location, and other important characteristics. We hope this session broadens your horizons during your college search. And just so you guys know, the six schools that you guys are going to be hearing from tonight are Case Western Reserve University, the University of Denver, Scripps College, Bennington College, University of Puget Sound, and Loyola Marymount University. So with that being said, I would like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, Case Western Reserve University. Very good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Tom Fanning. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission at Case Western Reserve University. Uh, and I have a quick slideshow for you. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio, private mid-sized research institution. There are four undergraduate schools at Case Western Reserve, our engineering school, nursing school, management, uh, and the College of Arts and Sciences. We're a place that put the primacy on the experiential side beyond the classroom and internships and research and all kinds of opportunities. Also a type of place where you're gonna build a community where you're gonna connect with advisors in the city of Cleveland. And I'll talk about that in a second. There are over 60 different majors um, uh, offered in many of the colleges in, uh, of the university, uh, spread amongst all these different disciplines you see listed on the screen here. Um, some of the largest departments are in the STEM areas and engineering areas, but you can study in the arts, you can study in business and the humanities, social sciences and nursing. So quite a few opportunities academically. Um, and we're also a major research center and that's an important piece. With 5,200 undergrads as a top tier research institution, your expectation is that you should be involved in research early and often if you're interested at uh, Case Western Reserve. In fact, we're full of inventors. We're full of people with ideas. One of the more famous stops on tour when you walk around campus is the Sears Think Box, which is one of the largest uh, undergraduate or academic maker spaces under one roof in the country, seven stories of maker space. Uh, so we really attract a lot of inventors, people with ideas. We have a big footprint at the Consumer Electronics Show every year, South by Southwest, the Entrepreneurship Challenge. So we're proud of that. We're looking for students who would like to take advantage of all these kinds of resources. It's also important to note that we're in the city of Cleveland. I know everybody wants to go to school on a coast and we're on the North Coast uh, and people use the city. It's a very important part. If you uh, came to Case Western Reserve, we would argue you would become a Cleveland lover even if you weren't when you got here. Um, but if you didn't head downtown, we're in the neighborhood of Cleveland about five miles from downtown. Uh, in University Circle, we're famous for a couple of things. One being um, that we're named after Case Western Reserve University, but also all of the cultural institutions in Cleveland surround us. The Cleveland Museum of Art, Severance Hall at home to Cleveland's orchestra is right on our campus. And we're also surrounded by three uh, major medical institutions, including the Cleveland Clinic. So any, do, anybody doing anything in healthcare will have a good opportunity to be engaged in these institutions. All kinds of ways to apply with early action, early decision, uh, regular decision. We have a pre-professional scholars program, which is a conditional admit program to our medical school. Uh, so uh, there's much detail on our website about how to apply. And I think in the interest of time, I'm going to leave it there and hope that, uh, that we've piqued your interest in Case Western Reserve University. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Next up, we are gonna hear from the University of Denver.
Thanks everyone. Uh, so my name is Stephanie Francis, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm one of our assistant directors of admission here at the University of Denver. Super excited to share with you all a little bit more about DU. Um, so if you're not familiar, we are actually a mid-sized private institution. We are located just south of the heart of downtown Denver. We kind of have our own quaint little residential area that we're situated in. Um, so super accessible to downtown, super accessible to the mountains, um, but not necessarily in your face. Um, we do have a two-year living requirement, so the vast majority of our first years do live on campus. Um, you'll have three different residence hall options. Uh, one of them is actually brand new, um, so it was just built this past summer. So some exciting things to live, whether you're on campus or just looking to explore your new home. Uh, in the classroom, we do have about 5,800 undergraduates on our campus. You're going to have about a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio and then about 22 students in your average class size. Um, those classes are going to be taught by professors. We don't have teaching assistants or graduate assistants teaching our classes. You will have a faculty member, um, somebody who has office hours you can go and grab coffee with, a great person to ask if you need help learning the material, or hopefully down the road serve as a mentor as well. Uh, a really important thing I wanted to point out because it influences a lot of what we do here at DU is that we actually operate on a quarter schedule, not a semester schedule. So instead of our students having two 15 week semesters, you actually have 10 four, or four 10 week quarters, I should, I should say. Um, that summer quarter, it is optional. It's also additional. So if it helps you understand it as a trimester, you won't insult me, that's perfectly fine there. Um, but some highlights with that is that our students actually take the same amount of credit hours per quarter that you would per semester. So what that does is it allows our students to take more classes over the course of four years than you may traditionally do otherwise. Um, and that opens up a lot of flexibility if you want to add majors, add minors, change majors or minors. Um, so if you're a student who has a lot of different academic interests, DU could be a really great school to consider. Um, another big highlight is that it does offer us a six week winter break. So because our students end their fall quarter before Thanksgiving and start back up after the new year, that means you'll have six weeks if you want to travel, go home and not book two plane tickets for holidays, um, get jobs or internships, all of that, um, again, really creates a lot of flexibility in your schedule. Uh, one thing we're really big on though is making sure that you're not just learning information in the classroom, that you're actually able to put that to practice. And so a few different ways we think students do that best, over 80% of our students do complete at least one internship before they graduate. Um, our vision here at DU is to be a great private university dedicated to the public good. So service is something that's really important to us as well. If that's a passion that you share as a student, just know there's a lot of opportunities for you to get plugged in with the community here at DU. And again, being so close to downtown, being so close to the mountains, um, it's really accessible for our students to get plugged in exactly uh, with Denver and the surrounding Colorado area. Um, other ways our students are doing that, we have something called the Sherrington Global Scholars Program, which is one of the reasons why study abroad is such a huge part of the DU experience. With the Sherrington program, all DU juniors and seniors actually study abroad for no additional cost. So what this means is that you're able to go abroad with your flight paid, passports, visas, all that good stuff, and then your cost of tuition stays the exact same when you go abroad. So you'll see the majority of our students do take advantage of that before they graduate. We are also a research-based institution with a liberal arts common curriculum. So that allows our students to do a lot of really cool and flexible things with their academics and sort of cater that to their personal interests. And all of this sort of builds up to hopefully set you up for the best possible success once you graduate. So you'll see about 90% of our graduates are doing exactly that and they're enrolled in graduate school or employed within six months of graduating. It's not just academics though, we have tons of other things students can participate in. We're a division one school for NCAA athletics. Um, hockey is our big spectator sport, but there's tons of others that you can go out and spectate as well as participate in if you're an athlete yourself. There's also a, a ton of different clubs and organizations that you can take part in, as well as some really cool, unique campus traditions that we have as well. And if you're interested in applying and actually becoming one of these students, um, just know that we have two different deadlines, November 1st and January 15th. There are binding and non-binding options in both of those deadlines, and we actually do not have a preference where, which one you apply by. Um, so just kind of a personal preference there. We actually have pretty even acceptance rates for our students in both of those. Um, but if you're just kind of looking to gauge where you fall academically, this gives you a good idea here. Um, one thing that I should note is that we are a test optional university. So if you don't feel like your SAT and ACT scores reflect your academic ability, you can still apply. You don't have to send those to us and you'll still be considered holistically for admission and merit scholarships, um, which speaking of merit scholarships, every student who applies is automatically considered for a merit scholarship. You do not have to apply for those separately. 
Um, but we'd love to continue the conversation with you. I'm happy to answer any questions here during the session. Um, but if you want to continue the conversation elsewhere and take a quick picture of this or something like that, um, you'll notice I listed Christy Stadema. She actually works with all of our students from Northern California. So you can reach out to her by email or contact any of our other offices there. But thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Next up, we are going to hear from Scripps College. Okay, let me get myself situated here. All right. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. My name is Jessica Johnston. I'm Associate Director of Admission at Scripps College. There are a few things that I want to uh, highlight about Scripps in particular tonight. Uh, we're a member of the Claremont Colleges Consortium down in Southern California. Uh, we are also a women's college. And uh, I also want to talk a bit about our curriculum. So I'll, I'll start off by talking about the Claremont Colleges for those of you who may not be familiar with us just yet. Uh, so we are a group of five undergraduate liberal arts colleges, all literally right across the street from each other. Our whole campus of all five schools together is about one square mile. So from the top of the top to the bottom of the bottom, it's about a 20 minute walk. Super easy to get from place to place and Scripps is right smack in the middle. So as a Scripps student, you can take classes at the other colleges. You can and join clubs at the other colleges. You can uh, go to events elsewhere. You can eat in any of the dining halls. Generally speaking, you can also even major in things taught at the other colleges. So uh, lots of room for uh, kind of mixing and mingling, however mu uh, much you'd like to with the other colleges. So sometimes because we have these other colleges next door to us, which I should probably name, they're Pomona, Scripps, Claremont McKenna, uh, Harvey Mudd, and Pitzer Colleges, uh, people ask, well, what's, what makes you different from your neighbor colleges, given that you're all small liberalized colleges, you're all located in the same town, which is about 35 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. Uh, so for me, it's two things. I'll start off with our curriculum. So we have something called the Core Curriculum in Interdisciplinary Humanities, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we just call it core. This is something that all Scripps students do and only Scripps students do. So even though you could have uh, students from the other colleges in any of your Scripps classes, these three are the exception. These will only be for Scripps students. So I, I'll highlight them very briefly. Uh, first off, you start in your first semester of for, uh, your first year taking core one. It's by far the biggest class you'll ever take at Scripps because it's taught to the entire first year class all at one time. And so you have lecture once a week uh, and those are, and then discussion sections twice a week. Those are significantly smaller, more around 20 students and led by a faculty member. You'll be with the same group and the same faculty member all semester long. There's always an overarching theme to core one. Right now that theme is truth. It rotates every few years. So previous themes have been uh, community, violence, human nature and human difference. So it's always something super broad. And each week the lecture is given by a different professor from a different department. So that's where you're getting that interdisciplinary look all at one idea. Next, you'll take uh, core two. The structure is very different. You'll have a variety of different uh, topics to choose from, but they'll all be somehow interdisciplinary in nature. So for example, uh, many of them are team taught by two professors from different departments. And then finally, you wrap up with core three. So this is your first semester of your sophomore year. The structure is similar to core two in that you have lots of topics to choose from and they'll all be somehow kind of in have a, some sort of interdisciplinary flavor to them, but it's project-based. You'll be working on something kind of big, independent, uh, something to show for yourself at the end of the uh, semester. And this is meant to be a good practice for when you eventually do your senior thesis, which is required of all of our students. The core program and thesis are meant to be the bookends of our academic experience at Scripps. Now, shifting gears a bit, I mentioned that we're a women's college, which makes us very different from everybody here tonight and uh, also all, all of our neighbors, which are all co-educational. So I, I think anybody in the Claremont Colleges can say they get to have their cake and eat it too. I think we are one of the best real life illustrations of the cliche, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We're all better because we have each other right across the street. But I think Scripps students in particular really get to have the best of all worlds. You can have a very typical college social life like you see on TV without feeling like you're missing out on some big rite of passage. But at the same time, you get to have this special unique experience of being at a women's college, which hardly anybody gets to have. And we are absolutely a women's college. It is baked into everything that we do. 
in a lot of ways, your day-to-day -day life at a women's college is not dramatically different than if you go to another small liberal arts college, because we are also that. Uh, but there are some things that we think about differently. We think about implicit bias as it relates to gender in the classroom and how we can combat that. We think about uh, faculty teaching style, our faculty teaching in a way that's conducive to the way in which women learn. Uh, and that's going to have a, a bit of an impact on your experience. But what I think is really important at a women's college is the, the sense of community. And I, I think one thing that's really special about it is that everybody who opts into the women's college experience, whether it's students, faculty, or staff, we all are making the active intentional decision to join a community that is dedicated to the success and empowerment of women. And that is something that we believe in, something that we live in our day-to-day -day lives. And, uh, and that just makes for a really different kind of vibe on campus. I think one thing that I appreciate so much about our students is that they understand that success is not a zero sum game. Your accomplishments don't take away from mine. We can both be awesome. We can inspire each other. We can be inspired by our peers. And that's one of the best things about being at a women's college. You just have that, that, you know, a whole community that's got your back. And that's a really special thing. I could talk about that forever, but I don't have forever. So happy to answer any questions that you may have about scripts or being a women's college later on in the Q&A or anything else like that. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Next up, we are going to hear from Bennington College. Thank you. Let me get situated here. Share my screen. Oops. We're all set, folks. So, um, again, everybody, welcome. My name is Tony Cabasco, and I'm vice president for enrollment here. At hey, Tony, the just yeah. so you know, um, it is not, it's in the presenter view. There, um, there you go. Is that good. it? Yep. There you go. Say, thank you. Oh, that was kind of funny. So thank you. Uh, so anyway, this is just a picture of our uh, beautiful campus. Uh, Bennington is located on 440 acres uh, in the foothills of the Green Mountains in, I think, the most real estate in New England, uh, Vermont. Um, Bennington, um, you can see here, we're on the southeast corner of the state of Vermont, about uh, 45 minutes from Albany. It's uh, there are a number of uh, trains uh, to get to New York City. It's about three and a half hours, three hour to Boston. So we're, we're not too far from some of the major um, central, uh, major metro areas in the Northeast, but we are a small co-ed uh, liberal arts college in New England. We were actually started as a women's college, but went co-ed in the early seventies. Um, Bennington has kind of been breaking the mold of a traditional liberal arts college from, from the beginning uh, and kind of retains that spirit in its DNA today. Um, you know, it's, it's really uh, founded in a bold idea of combining a progressive education with an emphasis on self-directed learning and a hands-on experience in the field. Um, today, Bennington is made up of over 750 creative independent undergrad students who come from all over 40 states, 60 countries, and bring a diverse set of backgrounds and experiences to campus. About a fifth are students of color, about a fifth are international students, and another fifth of the students, um, and, and about a fifth of the students are first generation students. Uh, and you can see that we're pretty much a, a residential campus uh, as well. Uh, Bennington though is known for really um, take, being a place that fosters this, uh, places our students around these global experiences uh, around the world and, and combines that both with uh, what they're learning in, in the classroom and getting a chance to kind of experience that in the world. And I think that what that has done is also created a network of alumni who are admired as change makers, ground makers, culture shapers, alumni who won Emmys like Peter Dinklage, who have won MacArthur Fellow Senior Grants and Pulitzer Prizes uh, like Donna Tart. We also break the mold in terms of um, the academic programs. We go beyond the majors. Uh, we call it the plan process. Uh, it's Bennington's self-directed learning model that start with the student's inquiry uh, that is guided by faculty in a collaborative process. And so uh, students will get to design their own uh, academic plan. Students might decide to combine the study of astrophysics and dance or psychology and architecture or gender studies, sociology and political economy. Um, and that's fostered by our innovative and flexible uh, curriculum. So um, 
there's no core curriculum, no required courses. And in fact, 50% of the courses uh, are new term to term. And we even have this option of pop-up courses, which are three-week courses on topics of interest to students uh, and faculty. Uh, last summer, for example, with all the uh, unrest in Belarus, uh, we had three students from Belarus at Bennington, one actually on campus and two back home uh, uh, due to the pandemic. And uh, because of interest and connection with the faculty, we had a class on democracy in Belarus with two students, uh, witnesses there, and one of them I even got arrested for, for participating in the protest. But that's kind of the, the curriculum and the innovation that can happen and the flexibility that we have in our curriculum. As I said, we combine that with some global experiences and kind of off-campus experiences. Uh, we call it the fieldwork term, uh, fieldwork experiences. There's a six-week term in between semesters where students can, can go out uh, and find an internship, a work experience, volunteer research experience that could happen. We were the first LaBarts institution to integrate the classroom study with an annual field experience. Uh, you can see here is one of our students doing an internship at Google down in Brooklyn and um, a recent graduate who is uh, interning with Senator Bernie Sanders in Washington, DC. We also have some partnership programs that are funded like the Museum Fellows Program, which is a study away option where you could do six week term um, uh, on um, doing an internship with one of uh, 10 major museums in New York City. Our newest uh, fellowship is the Population Health Fellowship which allows students to work with the Southwest Vermont Medical Center to study how to transform the healthcare model. And I think the, the outgrowth um, of all of this fostering of that um, innovation is you'll find that uh, nearly nine out of 10 of our alumni, of our students, by the time they graduate, will have publish a piece of writing, produce an album, uh, presented a research paper or poster, uh, exhibited a piece of art or perform or directed uh, for a public audience. You also find that um, we create a lot of uh, self-starters. Uh, we've been uh, named the number four most entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial of arts college and nearly a quarter of our alumni 10 years out have started their own business or organization and they're prepared uh, for life uh, after Bennington. So, you know, 93% employed in graduate, graduate school uh, or doing service programs. I'll just end there and just say that, um, you know, for in terms of ad admission um, and financial aid, uh, we are test optional. Uh, we have, we use the common application. And we even, we also have our own dimensional application, which is kind of like a portfolio type um, uh, Bennington's own portfolio type application. So I'll end it there and see if uh, there's questions later. Thanks. Thank you, Tony. Next up, we are going to hear from the University of Puget Sound. Okay, give me just one moment to get myself settled. And there we go. Hopefully you are looking at the right screen. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tori. I'm an assistant director of admission at the University of Puget Sound, and I'm really excited to be here to share some information with you this evening. Um, the University of Puget Sound is a national, independent, small liberal arts college located in the heart of the beautiful Pacific Northwest. We have about 2,200 undergraduate students on campus, plus another 250 or so in our four graduate programs. So while we're a small school, we're actually kind of on the big side of small. Um, in fact, at our size, we're nearly twice the size of some of our, uh, some other small liberal arts colleges. Uh, but we think that's actually really an advantage because it allows us to offer a fantastic array of academic programs, including a full school of music, a strong business and leadership program, a great range of STEM majors, and a number of super exciting uh, interdisciplinary programs like bioethics, global development studies, neuroscience, environmental policy, science, technology, and society. There's a really great list, um, just a, a wonderful range of programs that we're able to offer because we have more faculty and we're just a little bit larger. Of course, that being said, uh, we are still very much a small school. With a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one and an average class size of just 17, our classes really are small and engaged. Most are super discourse based and all of them are taught by the professor. So no TAs or grad students. Um, and that setup really allows you the opportunity to work closely with faculty and really build relationships, whether it's in the classroom or the lab or during office hours or in a coffee shop, uh, you know, where, wherever that might be. The classroom experience is 
awesome at Puget Sound. Um, but I will be honest, we spend a fair amount of time trying to push you out of the classroom. Um, we really believe in things like uh, academic research, internships, study abroad, community service. All of those types of experiential education opportunities are really vital to what we do. Um, they, they not only provide you with valuable experiences for like your grad school application or your job application, but you're bringing that experience back with you into the classroom day in and day out. And so they really enrich the educational experience, not just for you, but for your classmates as well. So totally a win-win situation. And I will say too that our location is perfect for all of those types of experiences. We're located in Tacoma, Washington, which is a city of just over 200,000 people uh, nestled into the busy Puget Sound corridor. Uh, we're about an hour south of Seattle. And although you can't see it on the map, we're about 45 minutes north of Olympia, which is the state capital. And that puts us in the heart of a pretty busy urban corridor, which runs north south through the Puget Sound region. So your opportunities for internships and research are really pretty expansive. But we do know that many people choose to come to Puget Sound for the other aspect of our location, and that is the easy access to the great outdoors. So while it might be pretty urban to the north and south of us, to the east and west, we've got a lot of mountains and forests and national parks. And of course, Tacoma sits right on the shores of the Puget Sound, which is the body of water that gives us our name. So if your interests run to the outdoorsy, hiking, climbing, camping, skiing, kayaking, canoeing, scuba diving, um, we definitely have you covered. And it's worth keeping in mind too that that easy access to nature and the outdoors also provides a pretty great uh, set of opportunities for research and internships as well. So with all of that going on around us, it's no surprise that our students stay really busy. Campus is home to over 100 different student-run clubs, 23 Division III varsity sports teams, plus loads of club and intramural teams too, uh, a really vibrant arts culture with uh, music, art, theater, all of that, um, and a student body that is friendly and supported and committed to making the world around them a better place. Our students are smart folks. They're doing top tier academic work. In fact, Puget Sound ranks among the, among the top 10% of baccalaureate granting institutions whose students go on to achieve doctoral degrees. And it's worth noting too that our medical school and law school admission rates are both twice the national average. Our students are smart and they are successful. But you'll find that the atmosphere on campus is a lot more relaxed than you might expect given that rigor and those outcomes. Students here tend to be really kind of internally driven, so not competitive. Um, the vibe on campus is definitely much more collaborative and much less um, it, it definitely helps too that our campus is just really, really pretty. With lots of red brick and ivy, trees and green space, it is a lovely place to study and to work and to live. All right, so I, I, I know I'm gonna run out of time here. So I just wanna talk briefly about applying to Puget Sound. We're a common app school and we are completely test optional. That said, we will of course look closely at your transcript, your essay, your activities. We'll look at all of that holistically uh, because we wanna ensure that we're a good fit for you and that you're a good fit for us. Um, and so if there's something that you think we need to know to put your application in context, let us know, get in contact. Um, we'd love to talk to you. Now, in terms of logistics, um, we have a pretty standard set of deadlines if you're looking ahead till fall. Um, no matter when you apply, though, you're automatically going to be considered for our full range of academic scholarships, and those go up to 30000 per year. We also have talent-based scholarships in music, theater, art, and debate. So if any of those are in your wheelhouse, then please consider applying. And of course, we absolutely have um, need-based financial aid as well. We'll just ask you to submit the FAFSA so we can take a look. All right. So I think I blew through that uh, in, in the right amount of time. Thanks so much for listening and we'd love to talk to you more. Thanks. Thank you. And last but not least, we are gonna hear from Loyola Marymount University. Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here. My name is Evelyn Fajardo. I'm an admission counselor of LMU and I'm also a really proud alumna. I'm originally from the Bay Area. So if any of you are from St. Mary's College High School, I am a Panther alumna class of 2012. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about LMU. What makes LMU so special? We are the only university in the world that are a combination of three things. We are Jesuit, we are medium sized and we are located in Los Angeles, California. So those are the three things that I'm gonna be focusing on today. 
First, we are a Jesuit institution. The Jesuits are an order or a group within the Catholic Church. So we are a Catholic university that is welcoming of students from all different faith backgrounds. What the Jesuits are particularly well known for in their approach to education is a combination of three things. One is a commitment to academic excellence. Uh, two is a commitment to the education of the whole person. And three is really encouraging our students to think how they can use what they're learning in class and apply them to make their communities a better place. And that is reflected in the three parts of LMU's mission. The first is the encouragement of learning. Of course, you're going to have excellent opportunities for learning inside the classroom with our professors, uh, with our uh, the conversations you have with your peers. Uh, but we also push students outside the classroom with research opportunities, whether that's researching with your professor, whether you come to LMU with a niche interest and you want to research it yourself, uh, whether that's joining an already existing uh, a multidisciplinary project such as a CubeSats program, uh, which uh, the goal of that is to launch an LMU nano satellite into space. Uh, students definitely take advantage of the fact that we are in one of the world's most famous metropolitan areas and definitely use the city's resources as an extension of the classroom. And we also offer over 80 different study abroad opportunities. The second part of our mission is equally important even though academics and intellectual engagement are crucial to your uh, experience, we also wanna make sure that you're growing as a whole person. So in addition to growing academically, you're gonna be growing in your interpersonal skills. You're really gonna be maximizing your leadership potential. You're gonna be engaging in professional development. Uh, if you are a person of faith, no matter what that faith background is, you can delve more deeply into your spirituality. And that brings us to the last part of our mission, which is the service of faith and promotion of justice. Like I mentioned, we are Catholic. Half of our students are Catholic and the other half of our students are not. So you can be Catholic on campus, uh, uh, Christians from different denominations, you can be uh, a Muslim, Jewish, atheist, agnostic. Uh, we welcome students of all different faith backgrounds. No matter what your uh, faith tradition is though, we do encourage all students to think of the ways that their skill sets and their passions can be implemented to make their communities a better place. LMU is ranked number four in the nation for students that are most involved in community service, even though LMU as an institution does not require service hours. That being said, our students do complete over 200,000 of them in a year, and we're very proud that we are a big part of our community. The second thing I want to talk about is the academic experience. We are a medium-sized institution. Uh, so that means we're big enough to offer lots of the opportunities you'd find on a large campus, such as NCAA Division I Athletics. Uh, we do have over 200 different clubs and organizations, including sororities and fraternities. We have over 150 different academic programs for you to explore, including majors, minors, pre-professional programs like pre-med and pre-law, as well as credential programs. Uh, that being said, while we're big enough to offer all that, we're still small enough to maintain the academic integrity of a small classroom size with an average class size of only 19 students and a student to faculty ratio of 10 to one. LMU is definitely very committed to making sure that our students are engaging with our professors on this personal level. And our professors take pride in the fact that in addition to being educators, they are also mentors to our students and they help them grow not only academically, but also in their personal and their professional lives. We do offer 61 majors and 55 minors across five different undergraduate schools and colleges, including our Bellarmine College of Liberal Arts, our College of Business Administration, our College of Communication and Fine Arts, our School of Film and Television, our Seaver College of Science and Engineering. We're very flexible if you want a double major between colleges, you want to major in one and minor in another, you're more than welcome to do that. They're all located on the exact same campus. It's easy to walk between them if you have classes uh, uh, for both of your majors or a, minor, a major and a minor. This is a very common LMU experience. Um, and it's really set up for those students who are intellectually curious and want to explore more than one subject that they're interested in. Finally, I also want to touch on our prime location. We are located in Los Angeles, California, uh, but LA is really big. So I think it's helpful to have the visual of where we're located. This map is not to scale by any means. We don't actually take up half the city of LA, uh, but it does help to see where we are in relation to everything. In terms of what there is to do for fun around LMU, we're about 10 minutes away from the beach. Students love going hiking in the mountains. They love exploring all the different areas of Los Angeles, including Hollywood and downtown. Love exploring all the different uh, culinary experiences that there are um, in Los Angeles. 
But there are also tons of professional opportunities in the area. LMU is known as the University of Silicon Beach, which is this area at the base of the LMU campus that is well known for its opportunities in technology, media, and startup companies. Uh, it's actually one of the fastest growing hubs for those kinds of industries in the nation. Uh, in addition to those industries, we also have tons of internship opportunities uh, by grace of being in Los Angeles, California. Every major industry operates in LA at the highest level possible. So whether you want to go into business and tech, whether you want to go into engineering or education um, or law or entertainment, you are going to be able to get hands-on opportunities. Uh, every year between 97 to 99% of our students have a positive outcome within six months of graduation. And it is something that we're really, really proud of. Finally, LMU is the best of both worlds when it comes to location because you have access to the urban area of Los Angeles, uh, but we are located in a small residential area. It's safe, it's quiet. I like to think of it as an oasis within Los Angeles, one of the few places in LA where you're able to see both the Pacific Ocean and the Hollywood sign at the same time. So I know our time is running short, so I'll just encourage you all to please visit, visit us if you'd like to learn more about LMU. I will drop the link in the chat. And if you have any questions for me, uh, please go ahead and um, put it in the Q&A section. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now that we've heard from all six schools, I'm gonna invite our panelists to join me back on camera um, to answer a question or two for you guys before we finish out for the evening. Um, so the first question I'm gonna ask is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you guys wanna just answer in the order in which you presented um, and share some insight with our audience, that would be wonderful. Oh, it looks like Case Western Reserve is first alphabetically, so I'm happy to go. Um, I am one of the, um, the only people on our staff, admissions staff, that has kids in college, so I've been a parent in this process. And it seems to me there are so many great choices that uh, if you go through an authentic search, listen, um, there may be many schools that meet, the, uh, meet your needs. Uh, but if you go through a good search, I'm pretty confident you're going to find a school where you're going to be happy going to take full advantage. And the last thing I want to say is the school doesn't make you, uh, it's a vehicle for you to do what you're going to do. So you need to love where you're going to be. Um, and so uh, I hope that's helpful. I'll pass it on. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Um, I would also just add that you don't have to have your entire life figured out right now. Um, a lot of you, when you're applying to college, you're going to be 17, 18 years old. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself or to have other people put on you to make it think that, you know, you have to have all of the right answers. So if you're not 100% sure on, you know, what major you want to do or what you want to do in a career long term, you know, start with the basics, meet with your college counselor, talk to admission counselors at schools that just seem interesting to you or that are in areas that you're interested in living in one day. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, wherever you end up, like Tom was just saying, um, you're, you're going to do well there. All right. Uh, so I would say for my piece of advice, keep doing what you're doing. Come to these virtual events and, uh, and take every opportunity that you get to learn about colleges that you maybe never even heard of. Like, you know, hopefully you had no idea of which colleges you were going to be hearing from right now. And hopefully something sparked something in your mind. And you're like, well, I'm going to go check that one out. Or maybe something kind of similar to that school. Uh, do that. And the more that you do that research and that reflection on what it is that you want in your college experience now and in these next couple of months before applications open and all of that, the easier everything's going to be down the line. Senior year comes hard and fast. And it's a lot. And that's great. And it's amazing. And it's sad. And it's wonderful. And it's the best. But, you know, the more you think about things before all of that happens, then you can really enjoy and savor that senior year experience because you're not thinking like, oh, where am I going to apply to college? Have that set a little bit earlier, know what you want, feel confident about that, and you're going to be in a good spot. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, uh, like Tom, I have, a, I have a daughter who's a college senior and a son who's a high school senior right now who's going through the process. Uh, so uh, I have that perspective as well. I guess what I would say that it's very easy to get lost. It's an extension of what uh, Jessica just said. It's, it's easy to get lost in the college search process to find out about it. It's about where I'm going to go 
and and it's about the college but i think a lot of times students forget that as yet um it's about you don't forget this is this is all about you reflecting on who you are what your strengths are uh what you're good at what you're not good at and finding trying to find a place that will match that and facilitate that and help foster those kinds of strengths uh, and help you become uh, the you that you want to be, that you will become, right? And it's very easy to think about, you know, uh, that um, college X will do it for me. You're going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And so I think it's important to really, um, I like to think of it, I've described the college search process as a, as a journey of self-discovery. If you do this well, you're going to learn a lot, about, a lot about yourself. There's a lot of navel gazing, a lot of looking in, inward, but you know what? You will learn a lot about yourself. And I think in that process, uh, you'll find that you're good, you're going to grow uh, and hopefully going to be a more interesting person to you and not just to us. Well, I've got to say, um, I'm clearly presenting with some youngsters because I have kids in their early 20s uh, who have been through the college process. And I promise you, you will survive it and make it out to the other side. Um, I think, um, you know, such amazing advice has come before. So that's the bad thing about being down on the list. It's going to be bad for you, Evelyn, too, like, right, because everybody's already said such great stuff. But I think that I would just say, especially looking at like my own kids experience, kind of don't don't chase that idea of perfect so much that it it kind of ruins your perception of what's in front of you. I think there's so much pressure right now on students to be perfect, perfect grades, perfect list of activities, uh, perfect test scores, all of this perfection. That's insane. Um, that is not what at least most colleges are looking for. I think I can speak for everybody here when we say we want genuine students who are genuinely engaged in their work. We're not looking for a perfect you know, cookie cutter student. Um, and understand too that your college experience might not be exactly what you thought it was going to be, but be open to, you know, kind of letting those experiences in. Um, you know, don't don't go in with such a preconceived notion about the perfect place or the perfect major. You know, allow yourself to grow. Um, it's a transformative time in your life. So allow that to happen. Uh, so going on with the similar theme of remaining open, speaking from the first generation perspective, uh, I went into this blind. Um, and so my approach to it was really chasing clout and chasing the big names of the schools that I'd heard in, you know, big movies, because that's the only really, that's the only thing I really knew about college. Um, and so I just encourage you all to remain open minded. Um, and I also recommend my second piece of advice is to use us as a, as a resource, use admission counselors as a resource. Again, as a first generation college student, I didn't know that you could do that, that I could reach out to a school and that they would be happy to help me. Um, I thought that I had to, you know, do all this stuff to impress them and that if I had any questions that would reflect negatively on me. And that's not the case at all. We're just here to help. So uh, definitely utilize your resources where you have them. Thank you all for sharing such wonderful advice. I'm sure our students and their parents um, will take that um, and really use it because it was wonderful to hear. So with that being said, I wanna thank everyone for joining us this evening. When you close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. This was just one of many different sessions being hosted tonight and tomorrow. So please be sure to sign up for more. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session's recordings at strivescan.com slash BACS. Thank you all so much. And thank you so much to our presenters this evening. I hope you all have a wonderful night.